everybody quest wise here today i want to do something a little bit different on the channel i want to do a sort of an homage video um there's been a lot of discussions lately on the interwebs about things like the hobby itself the hobby of role playing itself of game mastering why people role play those kinds of things been some great conversations but it's really got me thinking to about my sort of uh career as you, if you will uh, of, of being a role player why i'm so passionate about this hobby why i've devoted this entire youtube channel to to the hobby of role playing games themselves and um it's sort of you know made me do some very nostalgic thinking back to the time when i actually you know began role playing and how i began role playing and some of my other videos get into that whole history of of how i did and when i did and what I started with and all that kind of stuff, but it made me focus on a couple of different people that have really inspired me to to be a role player and to be a better role player and to spend a lot of time reading about improvisational skills and reading history books and reading fantasy and science fiction books and and working on imaginative thought processes and all these kinds of things. And one of the people that really stands out, and it's somebody I've never, ever met, and unfortunately I will never get to meet, um, but somebody who's been very influential in my lifetime as a role player. Uh, it's now 2017. I've been playing since about 1991, 92, somewhere in there. I graduated high school in 1993, so it was a few years before that that I was introduced to role playing. And it wasn't until recently that I began to like sort of look deeper into the games themselves and the people behind the games, really, to be honest. Um, and so what I want to do today is I want to talk about one individual who, over the years, by just sheerly out of the games that they've produced and uh, some of the uh, items that they've created, have inspired me to want to become a better role player and to be um, and to share the hobby. That's the that's the the main thing is that it is a hobby and it is a and an amazing hobby. And I think there are tons of benefits to our hobby as role players. And I think this person exemplifies that sort of excitement and that joy and that passion that comes from the games that we all love. And that person uh, would be Eric Wujic. Now, Eric has a long history with Palladium Books. In fact, I believe, from what I understand, he was one of the official... Um, original uh, creators um, of the Palladium system and was one of the uh, good friends of, of Kevin, the, the creator of the game, uh, and played together. That's They had met um, through, I believe, Wayne State University. I, I could be getting this completely wrong, uh, but, but from what I've learned, um, Eric was very instrumental into the Palladium books world as we know it today. Uh, unfortunately, Eric passed away in 2008 uh, from cancer, and um, but he left behind a very lasting legacy. And, and today I want to talk about what that legacy is and how, what it means to us and as role players and as hobbyists and, and what it means to me and, and why it's made me uh, as passionate as it has. But first let's start with some of the stuff that... that um, that Eric put out, that Eric created while he was designing games. Now, he's done tons and tons of games, and his, names can, his name can be found in credits of all sorts of stuff. Today, I'm going to focus mostly on the Palladium side of things. But Eric was also very well known for creating the Amber Diceless um, role-playing game, which was based on the Amber books. Um, the Amber, I think they're called the Amber Chronicles by Roger, Roger Zelazny. And that had some a huge following. Still has a very good cult following today. Uh, although those those role playing games are a little tough to find now. And if you can find one in pristine condition uh, on the you know through eBay or Amazon or whatever, they tend to be a little pricey. Very highly regarded amongst the 
the hardcore uh, diceless role players out there. Uh, but some of the other games that he uh, was very famous for were, and I just showed you this one, After the Bomb and all of its sort of uh, descendants, <laughs> if you will, uh, at the, you know, things like Mutants Down Under, Mutants of the Yucatan, uh, any of these expansion things for After the Bomb, and expansions for one of my all-time favorite role-playing games. And I was just able to reacquire a copy of this, but uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness. Um, this is the game that really, really capitalized for me the role-playing game as a hobby. Between this and Rifts, um, and, and a few other games in the Palladium line. This is this is where I began. This is where I started. Um, he's also very, very well known for, and I love this game too. I love this book. Um, I've had this book. This is probably the eh, one of the oldest Palladium books that I own, um, although not, not quite the oldest, but Ninjas and Super Spies. This one's still readily available today, as well as After the Bomb, although... The Ninja Turtle one is um, is not being currently produced by Palladium, uh, only because of licensing contracts and such as like that. What is it about these books that I find so fascinating? Well, there is something about Eric's writing that sort of like you can feel the true passion in the writing of these books. You can feel the true excitement that he had for these types of games. Now, After the Bomb, if nobody, if you don't know anything about this, this is, um, this is a game of post-apocalyptic craziness, uh, where in the, most of the humans have died off and only mutant animals sort of remain. And so this book is, you know, it's a fairly good sized book, uh, but this allows you to make basically any animal you can ever think of into a mutant animal um, and and use it as a character. And when I say mutant, virtually any animal, yes, there are hundreds of different animals uh, possibilities in here. And then the supplements like Mutants Done Under even expand upon those as well too. The passion that was put forth in these books is, is readily understandable. Like when you're reading through this, you can definitely feel that he had a very, very strong passion and pull for what he was writing about. It's, it comes through very clearly in here. And I find that very, very fascinating. A lot of times in role-playing games, you're just presented with a book of, of, you know, because so many people work on different products, now, especially with like the D&D &D line and stuff, there's so many different people who are involved in the whole process. And not that that's a bad thing. I think that makes a very great, it can make a very great game when you have lots of different people uh, collaborating onto it, one product and, and coming out with a, an amazing game and, and, and mechanics and such like that. But some of these, and lots of people worked on this as well too, but you... It's amazing how much you can feel sort of the Eric's passion come through in these books, in the writing itself. It's, I enjoy that aspect of it very much, only because a lot of times in role-playing games, and, and again, you're trying to talk to a very wide and diverse crowd of people um, when you're creating a role-playing game. You're trying to make it as appealing to as many different people as possible, and thus, sometimes it becomes a very sort of neutral writing style. Uh, though it can be fascinating, though it can be fun, though it can be exciting, sometimes they become very neutral. We don't want to offend anybody, and we want to try to include as many people as possible. I don't want to say that Eric ever offended anybody, but mutant animals in Australia is not going to be everybody's gig. Mutant animals in general... <laughs> Uh, are not going to be everybody's gig. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are not going to be everybody's gig. Neither are ninjas and super spies. But, because they were important to Eric, he poured his passion into these things. How did he do that? Let me show you. Let me use ninjas and super spies as an example. There are... 
41 different martial arts encapsulated into this book. Meaning that you can, when you're playing this game, and this, and the great thing about Palladium is that, the, and I love this about Palladium, I love universal systems. Things like, Palladium does it really, really well, I believe, in my honest opinion. I'm a fanboy, I, I will honestly admit that. And I, I think that, the, with a with a system like what Palladium has created that sort of transverses all the different games that they have, you can integrate any of this stuff into, you know, After the Bomb or into Rifts or into Palladium Fantasy. And I love that about the games because I like variety, but I don't want complex, super high complexity levels in my variety. And, and I think Palladium does that very, very well as they add a lot of variety without a huge amount of complexity. 41 different martial art programs in here, meaning that you can use them as is in here by playing some kind of a super spy or a ninja, some kind of espionage type game, or you can port them over into any one of these other games. You can tell every single one of these 41 different martial art styles are unique, they're different, and they're fully described in, in, in aspects like where they came from, what your opening stance would be, what the type of clothing, traditional clothing you would wear would be. It, it's amazing. You can feel the sort of like, in most games it would just be, you have martial arts skill. And it was up to you to decide what that meant. And here he breaks it down for you. And he gives you the options. He gives you tons of different uh, styles of martial arts from from Japan and China and the entire Asian continent. But he he brings so much more to that. He brings that sort of like the idea that he's done his research, that he has, and that from what I understand, did he spend a lot of time over in, in Asia and, and, and really loved the Asian cultures and stuff. And you can feel that passion in here. What I mean by that each style is different is they do have their own very distinct styles. Somebody who's playing, you know, the monkey fist style of Kung Fu, uh, as you know, as opposed to someone who's playing the drunken master style, they feel different. Mechanically wise, they feel different. And by doing that, you get a, a better sense of when you're role playing them, what that they, that they are different, that they, they, definitely feel different rather than just saying you know martial arts oh i can kick i can jump i can whatever he adds into such a nice com i don't know complexity he adds in such a nice spice and variety into each one of these styles that you can definitely feel the passion uh that he was put forth into there same thing with after the bomb you can tell by just the writing in here by just a different variety. And I want to say there's over, it says over 100 mutant animals. I want to say with this sort of, you know, uh, variations and things like different types of dogs and stuff, there's got to be well over 200 in here. Um, you can definitely feel the passion for this kind of a product coming out of Eric. So with that said, if you guys haven't checked out any of these products, please do. After the Bomb is still available, Mutants and Ninjas... Er, Super Spies, geez, oh, Pete's Ninjas and Super Spies is still available. Mutants Down Under is out there as well, too, uh, as well as a bunch of other stuff. If you can get your hands on a copy of the Amber Diceless, it does not use the Palladium system. It is its own system. Of course, obviously, it's Diceless. Um, if you can find a copy of that, go for it. Um, whether or not you're a fan of Palladium books like I am, I think you're going to really enjoy, and I think you can take a lot away from, from Eric's stuff. Simply as a fellow passionate role player. And that's the kind of thing that makes me want to be a better role player and game master. Like, I, I want to take those things that Eric has sort of presented in these books. And I want to bring those to the table. I want to bring that sort of excitement level, that sort of passion that he had for the games. And I want to give those to the players. Because... When you give those types of things, especially to new players, you're going to hook them. I know exactly that that it wasn't so much my the game master that first taught me how to play Palladium, 
this is what hooked me, but it was the passion in these books. It was the the inspiration, the very sort of ingrained, you know, excitement about these games that really, really hooked me as a role player. And I've played a lot of games over the years. I've played a lot of different systems, a lot of different rules. And I have to say that I, I always come back to Palladium. Now, I do play other things. I mean, I do. I mean, it's it's sometimes hard to find a group that wants to just do these kinds of things. And, and I do, you know, do play other systems. And I enjoy other systems. But there's something about the writing. And I think that this is already passed on. I think this is something as well, too, that all the guys who work for Palladium... Uh, in the past and currently right now and probably in the future. And, and I, I, you know, I've had a good talk with Kevin, the owner of the company before. And, um, but one thing I would like to ask him someday is does that passion, does Eric's passion sort of, and you can feel it in every product that's come out from Palladium, even the new stuff. And you can go back and check out my reviews and a few of those other ones as well too. But you can feel that that passion and excitement and stuff that Eric had for his writing and his game design it it seeps into everything that palladium does and that's why i love their games so much is because they they are full of that sort of excitement and and you can feel the 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 i, I say passion I, if you guys want to make this into a drinking game out there and take a shot every time i say passion you should all be laying on the floor at this point. But I can't think of any better word than passion. It really is sort of a a passionate approach to role-playing that you don't see in a lot of other game companies. So thank you, Eric. I just want to say that now, and I will never get to say it to your face, and I, I and that, that sucks. Um, but um, and a little thing, maybe some of you who know me outside of YouTube may know, have known that um, prior to doing quest wise i for for 11 years i had run a um, a small local game convention uh, fundraiser called gaming for a cure and i set it up in uh in honor of a friend of mine uh, wesley gear who passed away uh, at the age of 33 from cancer and i did it for wes and i did it for all the other people out there who are struggling but i also in a small minor way did it for eric because when I lost Wes, I sat down and I thought about what it is that, that, that cancer takes from us. And, and it, it takes our friends and it takes our families, but it, it also strips sometimes the joy away from us. And that was one of the things that I, I don't think that Wes would ever want to have, have taken from the world was a sense of joy. And because Wes and I were, we basically were bonded as brothers because of role-playing games. Um, when I was doing Gaming for a Cure for all those years, it it was Eric that I thought of, and it was Eric's games that I ran a lot of as well, too. And uh, that's all. I, that, that, that event still goes on. Uh, I passed it on to um, my one of my head volunteers, and they, uh, volunteers, all now run that that um that event it takes place here in a small local town in northern michigan and um all the money raised for that goes to Amer directly to the american cancer society but um that was a different chapter in my life and i moved on and, uh, and i've now become quest wise and i'm bringing you great videos great videos uh <laughs> in my mind they're great i hope you're all enjoying them too uh, again we're over 100 subscribers i think we're 115 now so everybody, thanks for that. And I just want to say thanks to, to Eric Wojcik, and I want to say thanks to Kevin and 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 Chuck Walton and all the amazing guys over there, Wayne Smith uh, at, at Palladium. Thank you for carrying on that legacy and and kicking ass and bringing us great games and continuing to bring us great games. And uh, I look forward to seeing that passion from you all in the future. I guess that's it for today. Uh, I just wanted to do this this video it's a very different type of video from what i normally do i hope you enjoy it uh i'd like to love to see your comments in the in the notes below or if you want to send me a private message on how you feel about uh the passion behind gaming and and what it is that drives you further into the in, into the gaming hobby itself i'd love to hear from you uh but until next time i'm quest wise and we're out <laughs>